So we had an election in New South Wales, the most populous state in Australia over the weekend, and Labor swept to an overwhelming victory. Labor is the centre-left party, and the Liberals are the centre-right party in Australia. And the Liberals lost power for the first time in 11 years. And what was striking about the, the election is how little they differed on policy and how well the two competing politicians, the two leaders of the Liberal and the Labour Party got along. Like they didn't trash each other, all right? They, they like each other, they respect each other. And the, the small amount of policy differences is a representative of Australian politics over the last 10, 15 years, all right, there's very little, very little difference between the, the major parties in Australia anymore. And it's all kind of a, a neoliberal consensus. There's a consensus that they, foreign policy, that they're throwing in their lot with the United States. And uh, there's just not a whole heck of a lot to argue about. So when you watch the news in Australia, you might find it very boring. That happy country, boring news, because the major political parties are largely aligned. The country is pretty well governed. Uh, the government runs efficiently. Low levels of corruption. Uh, high levels of social trust, social cohesion. Most people feel like the government is on their side. And uh, the country's just had you know, an unbelievable run of prosperity. Uh, it basically had approximately 30 years of uninterrupted economic growth. And uh, politics seems to occupy very little you know, relative attention in the Australian mind. So I was in Australia for three months and I think one person started up with me to talk about Australian politics. Like no one offered to me their opinion on the Prime Minister of Australia, Albo. It's his nickname, Anthony Albanese. I had three months in Australia, no one offers me an opinion on the Prime Minister. Right? No one starts up talking about Australian politics. So Australia can afford to put it low priority on politics because it's not fighting for its survival. Right? The enemy trying to wipe it out has not yet risen into view. Now, over the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of conversation in the Sydney Morning Herald about uh, the China threat. So two of China's main shipping routes go past Australia, so China may have incentives to invade or control Australia. They certainly try to bribe their way into controlling Australian politics. China's Australia's number one trading partner, but the United States is definitely America's Australia's number one strategic defense partner. And so the major all the major political parties are aligned with throwing in with the United States. So the Labour Party is now in control in the Australian government federally and in almost all the major states run by Labour governments but they just recently agreed to buy nuclear-powered submarines from the United States, which will you know, give Australia considerable nuclear power and strategic punch against China if there's a war. And it's a, largely a political consensus. Probably 75% of Australians feel united behind a defense alliance with the United States. The United States has been the main military protector of Australia since World War II. Right? America rescued Australia from Japanese in World War II. And ever since then, Australians have fought with Americans whenever America goes to war. That's the, that's the price to pay when you're America's military defense partner. But uh, as long as China or 
or any other enemy is not threatening the existence of Australia and it can afford tranquil politics and as long as the economy is humming along most Australians can afford to just ignore politics.